In our last tutorial, we talked about how arrow functions, in addition to concise syntax, provide this binding lexically. We looked at how this can cause issues in object methods. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how this presents an advantage in callbacks. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you'd like to sponsor this channel, there's a link in the description for our Patreon location. Now, I was planning to release this tutorial on Wednesday, the 24th of July. However, you may be getting this a bit late because here in the state of Utah, where I live, the 24th is a holiday to honor the Christian pioneers that settled here. Now, this tutorial is an important one for understanding lexical this binding that arrow functions offer. This can be an advantage in certain situations with callbacks. If you haven't watched the previous tutorial, make sure you do that first. I will include a link in the description. Also, if you're unfamiliar with callbacks, I'll link to a tutorial on that as well. So let's first talk about some code that I've put together to help illustrate the advantage that we get from arrow functions. Now, what I have here is I've set up an object. And I've tried to keep this as simple as possible so that there's not a lot of extraneous information to worry about. But I have a data property, and I just put in a string there to indicate that this was the data. And then I have a function, and this is the init function. This function gets invoked when the page first loads. So this sets up some things is basically what we're doing. Right now, all it does, all it sets up is it grabs an a DOM element from the HTML page. Basically, it's a div with an ID of content main. So it grabs that, and then we add an event listener to it uh, on the click event. And all that, that, all that happens when the event is clicked is we log to the console this.data. So we want to display this information here. All right? And that's all we're doing. So nothing super complex, but this will allow us to see the advantage of arrow functions. So let's first take a look at this and see what happens. I'm going to open the console so we can see the console log statement when I click on this here is the div which we've added the event to. And so when I click on that, notice that what gets logged is undefined. So let's jump back to the code. So undefined, it's not finding this.data. It's not finding right here. Now to help us understand what's going on here, let me just put a console log statement for this to see what the value of this is. And we'll go ahead, reload that, click again. And right now we can see the value of this is that div tag. See how when I mouse over that, it highlights it up here. So that div tag is what the value of this is when that callback invokes. This here is the callback, which is called when we click on that div. So that's a problem. It's not referring to the object here, which is what we thought it would do or what we wanted it to do. So we need to correct that. Well, traditionally, there's been a couple of ways to go about correcting that. Here's a pretty common one you may see sometimes in older code where they'll set a variable, sometimes self, but a lot of people have changed from self to that, and they'll simply set that variable equal to this. Then, when we come down here and change this to that, we will get the correct value of this. It will refer to this object, and so it will grab this data. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now if we click now we get this is the controller data. So we're getting the right information displayed in the console. The value of this is still that div tag. That hasn't changed. That was still the value. 
but we just did a workaround so that we can get the correct information that we're after. All right. Another way that, that this kind of thing has been solved is with the bind method, for example. Binding a particular function with the value of this, and then you invoke that function. So there are a couple of methods that have been used. But the one we want to look at, the one that is really the cleanest now, is using an arrow function. So I'm going to remove this here. And you know what? Let's just remove all that as well. And we'll set up the arrow function as opposed to doing a regular function. Now remember, an arrow function, besides its concise syntax, does lexical this binding. Now lexically refers to where it is written. So it is written here. It takes the outer object, which is that one. And that becomes the value of this. And that's exactly what we want here. And so an arrow function is ideal. So I'm going to set that up. There's the event object, just in case I need it, which I won't use it in this particular function, but I'll just put it there anyway. And then the only thing we're going to do is log to the console this.data. That's our arrow function. Let's go ahead and save that and now see how that works. So refresh, we're going to click on that and we get this as the controller data. So the arrow function, because it does lexical this binding, it uses the value of this that we were expecting because we entered this inside of an object. Okay. Whereas when we don't use an arrow function, this binding is determined implicitly by how it is invoked. And since it is invoked from this object, the DOM element, that becomes the value of this. And therefore, we don't find this.data. All right, so we've looked at a tutorial, a tutorial where it showed a problem the arrow function can cause, and a tutorial where it shows the advantage. And all these have to do with that mysterious property of this in JavaScript. So just to summarize, when it comes to this binding, arrow functions are great for callbacks and nested functions, but not so good for constructors and methods. In the previous tutorial, we looked at the methods and the problem that it caused. So just remember that little summary, and that can help you. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also, click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week, usually on Wednesday. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.